Hello, good evening and welcome to day one here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Now we had an incredible morning of action and the action is not going to stop there. In fact, it's not going to stop for the next six days. So make sure you stay tuned for our live feed where we're bringing you all the heats, all the semi-finals, all the finals and any information we possibly can will be coming live here. And we are, of course, joined by our lovely commentators, Ross Davenport and Bob as well, very well known to, uh, to British swimming. Now, speaking of being very well known, uh, I'm not here alone for the rest of the week. No, no, I'm joined by the lovely Kerry Ann Payne. I have to say, two times world champion and Olympic silver medalist. Kerry Ann, how are you feeling to be here? Because we had a great morning, didn't we? Yeah, it was really weird actually sitting on this side and not actually getting in and, and swimming. Um, but it's really nice to, to talk about swimming, to talk about the thing that I absolutely love doing and talk about all my friends that are in the water. Now, do you not feel, being here, we sat talking about the swimmers, about their achievements, but do you not feel like you just want to get in there for a swim yourself? I do, it's quite warm, so it might be nice to get in there. <laughs> you don't normally feel that, that <laughs> no, do you, at really. all? Because you haven't finished swimming at all by any, any no. stretch of the imagination. You're just taking a bit of time out at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, I'm taking time out of the competitive side of things. I'm still training, so I'm doing around about five or six sessions a week as opposed to the ten that I would normally be doing. Yeah, and how are you finding that? It's really good actually. It's, um, it's, it's been quite a novel, I must admit. So doing my hair and doing my makeup rather than kind of just going for a week of just ha hair up, wet hair and stuff. So it's quite nice. Yeah, well, you're looking great for it anyway, <laughs> Carrie Ann. Now, we've been having quite a lot of discussion about the event here uh, in Glasgow, the Commonwealth Games in the summer. What are the swimmers here to do, Carrie Ann? It's inevitable, isn't it? So they're here really to, to crown the British champions, but also it's the predom predominantly it's the England qualification yeah. process here, which is quite a tricky thing. It is um, quite tricky, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think um, you know we, we had a little chat about that earlier, so um, mm -hmm. I think we'll hopefully by the end of the week we'll we'll get there and we'll be able to understand. Yeah, a little bit more about what the process is. Because it is quite complex, but luckily we did have a bit of a chat about it earlier on today. So uh, let's have a look at that that chat we had. So here we are discussing the selection process for the English team for the Commonwealth Games 2014. Now, Kerry ann it's quite a complex process, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so there's a maximum of 36 athletes that can be selected on the team. And it's not a qualification time, but it's more okay. a nomination process. So how can our swimmers be selected or nominated? So there are these nomination times and athletes will re really be wanting to go underneath that time, as far into that time as they possibly can, but we'll not find out if anybody's made the team until next Wednesday. Okay, so we have a swimmer this evening, for example, gold medal, has a great swim, has a great time. They won't then find out if they've been nominated until Wednesday next week. Yeah, and they might not even make the team. So the athletes will be judged on how high they are on the FINA ranking system. So if an athlete isn't high enough up on that ranking system, but they win the event, they might not be selected. Okay, so it's, it's quite complex, it's quite difficult. So remind me again, how many swimmers can be nominated? So there's a maximum of 36 athletes that can be nominated. And how can they be nominated? And they'll be nominated on how high they ranked on the FINA ranking system. And they find out, of course, on Wednesday of next week. Now, don't forget, you can get all live, up-to-date action here on the live stream as we bring it all for you for the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Now we are, of course, bringing all that action live, which is what's so exciting, but it's all very well us sitting at this side of the camera talking to you. We want to hear what your thoughts and opinions are as well. So carry on, I'll let you uh, read out, because I'm, I'm not too too good on the old Twitter, which I, no. I probably got about 10 followers, but you're, you're quite hot on Twitter, aren't you? Yeah, I love Twitter. So if you do have any questions for us tonight, um, if you just use my Twitter handle, at Kerry Ann Payne and we'll, we'll answer your questions during the show. So any questions, of course, um, I'm Hannah Creelman one uh, but focus them at Kerry ann Payne. <laughs> I think that's probably wisest. Um, but make sure that you, any questions you've got, or if you'd like to ask Kerry ann anything about swimming or any questions in general about training, then uh, make sure that you tweet us. So you can use our hashtag as well, which is BGSC14. So that's hashtag BGSC14, and we will make sure that they're answered as quickly as possible. <laughs> That'll be down to you, Kerry ann <laughs> Down to us. All down to you. Now, so far, we've had a, a great morning, as we said earlier. So let's maybe take a look at a recap of what we've seen so far.
The first morning of the British Gas Swimming Championships in Glasgow contains some Britons who are currently ranked number one in the world. Amy Wilmot won't be getting the chance to race British record holder Hannah Miley in the 400 metres individual medley here, as the Scot has decided not to do it. So it's down to the English record holder to show what she could do against the clock and 440.70, nearly eight seconds faster than the nearest challenger Ellis Jackson. Another absentee was Robbie Rennick, who's achieved his time in the 400 metres freestyle for the Commonwealth Games. So the stage was set, or so we thought, for James Guy to set the fastest time in the heat. But Jay Lediot going in heat number five, knocked over four seconds off his best time to clock three minutes 50.36, four tenths quicker than the World Championship finalist. The women's 200 metres freestyle is an event where there are lots of improving swimmers, none more so than Siobhan Marie O'Connor, better known up until now by most as a medley swimmer. But she posted a heat time that will make many sit up and take notice, a rapid 157.23 over a second quicker than the Welsh record holder Jazz Carlin, six swimmers going under the two minute barrier. One of the eagerly anticipated battles this week will be between Adam Brown and Ben Proud in the sprint freestyle and butterfly. First round to the 20-year-old from Plymouth with a blistering heat swim in the 50 fly. He clocked 23.78, Brown's second fastest, but over half a second slower. Liam Tancock is back, a rather more her suit one than we're used to seeing, but his time of 55.34 in the heat to the 100 backstroke shows that after an injury-ravaged year, he is back to race the likes of Chris Walker Heaven. Just faster, Liam. Fast swimmers as far as the eye can see in the men's 200 metres breaststroke. Heat four contained English record holder and the man who finished fourth at last year's World Championships, Andrew Willis. Mid 211 for him, pushed all the way by young upstart Adam Peaty. Could Olympic silver medalist and fastest man in the world in 2014, Michael Jameson, respond to his training partner at Bath? Well, not quite, but 2.12.43 will do nicely for their head-to-head -head this evening. We could possibly see the two fastest world times later. Doing carry on Okay, so carry on This is pretty, pretty exciting, isn't it? We're going to have a great evening. Can you give me a quick summary on, on sort of what you're expecting this evening from the event? Yeah, well, we have Hannah Miley in the 400 medley, and I think I'm really interested to see on her last 100 to see she'll be on her own, I think, for most of the race. So if she can beat that PB that she did of, uh, of a 4.33 in January. Yeah. OK, and, and any other any further predictions of, of what you think from each event that's going to happen? Tonight? Yeah, so we also have James, uh, James Guy in the 400 freestyle. Even though he wasn't ranked going first into the final, I think he was holding quite a lot back. So I think tonight he has to work on a few finishing touches, so not breathing going into the turns um, or coming out of the turns. But I think he'll be trying to chase that British record, which is only just a little quicker than the actual nomination time. OK, well, let's take a look at the schedule for this evening so far. You can see in front of you, Kerry Ann, I'll let you do the honours. So we have the junior women's 400 metres individual medley and the junior men's 400 freestyle. And then we'll have Amy Wilmot up in that 400 metres individual medley final, followed by James Guy in the 400 freestyle final. And then we have the women's 200 freestyle, which is where the relays will also be decided. So there'll be lots of places up for grabs in that. Then we have the men's power 100 freestyle final, followed by the, the women's 50 metre breaststroke semifinals, the men's 50 metre butterfly semifinals, then we also have the women's 100 metre butterfly semi finals and the men's 100 metre backstroke semi finals, where we'll have Liam Tancock swimming in that race. And then we're on to the, I would say, probably the most exciting race for me for the evening is the men's 200 breaststroke final with Michael Jameson, um, Andrew Willis, Adam PC, loads and loads of really fast top class swimmers in there. And then we finish off the night with the junior women's 200 freestyle final and the junior men's 200 breaststroke final. And breathe, carry on, and breathe. <laughs> so we've got a great night of action. So let's hand you over to Ross and Bob to give you all the insight for these next races. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Kerry Ann. Yes, we are ready and raring to go with the first event of the evening. We have a couple of junior finals to start off with the women's 400 meters individual medley. These are the juniors who uh, set the eight best times this morning. And these are they. And I'll tell you about the clubs in a few moments' time. But that's the start list with Jennifer King in one and Chloe Golding in eight.
So Abigail Humphreys of City of Coventry in one, Emma Kane and Millfield in two, Georgia Coates of Leeds in three, Rosie Rudin of Nova in four, Abby Wood of Deventure in five, Southport's Holly Hibbert in six, seven, Isabel Griffiths, and she's from City of Birmingham, and the Peterborough swimmer Catherine Brown, all of them from England, so it'll be an English victor here in the junior final. Yeah, that's right, it certainly will be, and there's some great swimmers in this junior final. Many of them have represented Great Britain at European Juniors. We we'll certainly will be looking to do that in the future. This is a chance for them to, to post a time that will put them into the, the criteria for being selected for the European Juniors later on this year. Rosie Rudin signed personal best this morning. First time that she's been under 450. 449.43 is the time. Uh, sorry, they've, they've redrawn this one, so uh, it is the touch of Holly Hibbert, 106.15. So Holly Hibbert taking that first 100 butterfly out in 106.15, just turning slightly ahead, just, just over a half a second ahead of the swimmer from Millfield, Emma Kane, in lane number five. So watching lane four, Holly Hibbert of Southport, who's uh, leading the way here by about a, well, I was about to say a body length, but if the um, distance that we are from the turn means that uh, Abigail Humphreys is probably a little bit closer than she looks from where we are. In fact, so much so, she's taken the lead. 144.60 for Abigail Humphreys. Holly Hibbert in second place in the turn, and Emma Kane is in third place. This is one of the most difficult events on the programme. This and probably... You know, the 200 meters butterfly and certainly for the women, 800 meters freestyle. But the 400 medley is, you know, one of those events that you've got to be good at all four disciplines. You can't have a weak stroke. If you want to be world class, you know, you look at the, the likes of Michael Phelps. He was world class at the butterfly backstroke. He could do an extremely good breaststroke and he was world class at front crawl. And he's one of the best swimmers in the world. He was the best swimmer in the world record holder in the 400 medley. So it just shows you have to be an all round swimmer. You can't just get away with having one strong leg. This is starting to get quite a contest, quite a challenge, quite a race between lane six, Abigail Humphreys, and Holly Hibbert in lane number four, and not out of the picture either, is Emma Kane in lane number five, but four and six are the two who look to be contesting this. Just waiting to see whether lane five can make a move, also making a bit of a move now, starting to edge towards the leading group is Isabel Griffiths of City of Birmingham, but this will be the term. And Abigail Humphreys of Coventry leads, Holly Hibbert in second, Emma Kane in third, but as you can see from the clock, only a second separates one, two, and three at that turn. Brilliant first 50 meters, breaststroke, and it does actually look like it's Emma Kane from Millfield. It's now starting to turn the screw on the rest of the field. Had a great underwater phase on that breaststroke, and now is powering down with the last 15 meters to go before we turn onto our front, onto the front freestyle leg, and she'll be powering home. She's just extending that lead. Each stroke goes passing by, and she's got five meters to go before she turns onto the freestyle leg. Once again, the breaststroke proving to be the leg that separates the better swimmers from the, those who maybe have pretenses to be the best swimmers but can't actually quite carry it out in this environment. There's no doubting at the moment who is the best. It is the swimmer in lane number five, Emma Kane, and she seems to be uh, at least holding her lead. Freestyle perhaps not quite as strong as the swimmer to her left-hand side, the far side from where we look, Abigail Humphreys, but uh, she, I think she's realizing there's a challenge coming and lurking alongside her, so she's just uh, stepped it up a little bit with 50 to go. 4.19.69 is Emma Kane's turning time, Holly Hibbert in second, and Abigail Humphreys in third. Yeah, it looks like she's going to hang on for the win. 35 meters to go, and she's really has started to go to her legs now and powering down this final 25 meters. But she's being challenged by lane number four, Holly Hibbert, from Southport. But it's going to be all in vain, as it is going to be Emma Kane who wins this first final of this evening. Emma Kane's time this morning was 
through her personal best is 4.57. She's just beaten her personal best, according to my statistics and information here, by full six seconds. 4.57 was her personal best. It is now 4.51.91. And she looked absolutely delighted with it. She's shattered, but she is delighted. She can't quite believe what she's just done. But as you just mentioned, an absolutely huge personal best. And what a time to do it here at the Commonwealth Games Pool in Glasgow. And that is a fantastic way to start off this evening's procedures. Holly Hibbert with uh, a personal best, not a big one, but nonetheless, it is a personal best nonetheless. Emma Kane winning in 451, Holly Hibbert in second, and Abigail Humphreys in third. As the winner in the green cap. What a great performance from the Millfield swimmer. Age group uh, 13 years, she won the silver at 200. And has uh, some impressive performances along the way, but none more so than that as we move on to the, the junior 400 meters freestyle final. That is your one, two, eight. And to our list, Julian Chan Kui Lin in lane number eight. We only had seven on the original lineup, but we do have eight. So Julian Chan Kui Lin is an addition to the start list for the final of the junior 400 meters freestyle. Coming out on to Paul Deck in lane eight. There is Julian Chan Kui Lin. Carl Chisholm in lane one for the Borough of Kirklees. Reese Worth of Plymouth Leander will occupy lane number seven. City Newport swimmer representing Wales, Cameron Brown in lane number two. Thomas Howley of the City of Newcastle. Unfortunately, City without a pool these days, so not a 50 metre pool anyway. He's in lane six. Ben Kerry of City of Salford, English swimmer in three. Martin Walton of Hatfield goes in five. And the fastest qualifier from this morning, 3.57.13. Just outside his personal best, Daniel Jervis of Swansea University. So we have a, a mix here of Welsh swimmers and English swimmers. Daniel Jervis and Cameron Brown representing Wales. All the other swimmers for England. Eight lengths of this toll cross pool. Could be quite tight in terms of uh, finish here because Martin Walton and Daniel Jervis have very similar times in terms of personal bests. And Ben Kerry is not too far shy of that either. Interesting to see how the different swimmers attack this race, approach this race. And uh, Julian Chan Kui Lin on the far side is um, going for a very fast time, it would seem, early on. I'm not sure he can quite keep up this pace in lane number eight, but um, as he wasn't on the original list, I think he's just trying to make up a real lost time here. Yeah, he probably is. He's, uh, looks like he has got very, very excited, and he is going to turn first in 27.12. And that could be, uh, you know, this is a big deal for, for these swimmers. It's probably the first time that they've uh, swum in a final. It's a senior competition. OK, it is a, a junior final, but they're walking out in front of a couple of hundred people, again, in the Commonwealth Games pool. And, you know, this is, this is, their, this is their Olympic Games. Um, and this is put in there to get them used to producing those times in the heats to get into the finals and how they deal with the pressure. But it is at the minute, it is lane number four, Daniel Jervis, is going to turn first in 56.87. Bit too much enthusiasm, I think, from Julian Chan Kui Lin, who went from first at 50 to sixth at 100. So the race is now just starting to settle down a little bit, as indeed is he, and Daniel Jervis as well in lane number four. Is as we suspected he might be, the uh, fastest qualifier from this morning, certainly up there with the rest. And uh, Martin Walton is going to be alongside him at the turn, alongside Benjamin Kerry. In fact, one, two, and three at 150 are separated by just a quarter of a second. 
Yeah, it's very, very tight. Still a long way to go in this race. We're not even at halfway stage yet, but it is. You can see now it's even getting in tighter with probably about four or five of the swimmers all starting to, to creep up onto Daniel Jervis and Martin Walton. I expect Martin Walton to come back very, very fast over the last second hundred. There is actually lane number three. Benjamin Kerry is going to turn first at the halfway mark, 157.90. Well, we've already had three different leaders at turns in this event. I think that could change all over again because it is so, so tight between Benjamin Kerry, Daniel Jervis, Martin Walton, and Thomas Howley's not out of the picture either. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, pretty much in a line going from lane number three. And look at uh, all of a sudden lane number seven, Reese Worth is going for it. <laughs> 228.32. So he's leading for the first time in the race. Martin Walton is second, Daniel Jervis third. This is a very difficult one to call because it's changing every 50. It still is. At the 200 meter mark, there was a second separating six swimmers. And it looks like that's still the case now as we're starting to come down to the 300 meter mark. The third 100 of these 400 events are always the most important, whether it's the, the IM or the freestyle. And even looking at the 200 meters freestyle, it's the third 50. So that is really shown there that you know, lane number seven, Reese Worth, is put down that marker on that third hundred and got himself in the lead but now as you can see he's still in the lead but the race is catching up with him yeah and catching up with him very rapidly here is lane number five martin walton did mention him earlier on that was uh, quite a break there from reese worth who took a massive chunk out of his personal best this morning and uh, was looking to do likewise here but it, that little burst maybe has cost him this race martin walton leads daniel jervis in second benjamin kerry in third as they come into the last 50 here thomas howley in fourth and reese worth is now back from first place to fifth it's changing all the time, but it's certainly not going to be a change. Well, actually, as you say, Martin Walters got this tied up. So there's a strong challenge coming from lane four. Daniel Jervis from Swansea University It's going to come down to the touch. What a tight finish it's going to be, and he's catching with every single stroke, and I think the Welshman may have got it. Has he? No, Martin Walton just gets there behind Daniel Jervis. Boy, there were seven one hundredths of a second behind first and second there Jervis 356.43 that is just inside uh, the time uh, it's personal best by two one hundredths of a second and in second place what a race that turned out to be Martin Walton 356.56 Benjamin Kerry in third place and fourth Thomas Howley that was a remarkable finish look at these two coming into the wall he timed it to absolutely perfection, right, he was only winning, right at the last stroke there. Bang, head down into the finish, got the win by, by just around, just under 0.2 of a second. He's delighted with that time, inside his personal best, fantastic. Daniel Jervis then, personal best for him, and a victory, the winning time, 356.43. Martin Walton in second, and Ben Kerry in third in the junior men's 400 meters freestyle final. Now, what a swim there by Emma Kane. She, she shaved a lot of time off her, her personal best. What is it, six seconds? I know that's one of the best things about being a junior is that you do these six second PBs or nine <laughs> second PBs in, in a competition. But she seemed really, really pleased with that swim. And her breaststroke was such a good leg. I mean, that's where she won the race for me. She won it there. Yeah, but you can see that on the screen there. I mean, what, what an incredible swim. What a, a great stroke that she's got as well. Yeah, she was actually behind at the backstroke and then she managed to kind of get joint, round about joint first and then she came down on that freestyle. I thought, you know, that Holly Hibbert was going to catch her up, but she managed to keep her off. She used her legs the whole way down that last 50 and then had an absolutely storming finish. And we don't finish there with the personal best because Daniel Jervis there we saw uh, for the for the junior. Boys, what an incredible swim. This is such great experience for the juniors, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really good thing as a junior. You don't get the opportunity that often to actually have an evening swim, to have a final swim. So it's really good that they're getting these opportunities to do those final swims. And the lead changed so many times during that race, which yeah, is was, kind of the curse, was tight, wasn't it? or the beauty of the race. But like uh, Ross was saying, he, he was behind the whole way, and then it was literally on that last stroke that he managed to win to win that race. He put his head down, didn't breathe in the last five meters, 
and he won the race. Because that's a keen, a keen place to take it, isn't it? From the flags to the finish, it's yeah. head down and it swims straight into that wall. And that obviously worked there for Daniel. So we're not going to stop there with the action because we're moving on now to the women's 400 metres individual medley final. And this is where I utter the immortal words up for possible selection. So the for consideration, if Amy Wilmot gets the time we expect her to do here, probably nobody else in this field is capable of doing the kind of time that's been set by the English selectors, or the ballpark times, anyway, they've been set by the English selectors for qualification for the Commonwealth Games later on in the year. This is uh, all about Amy Wilmot against the clock. Georgia Coates are oh, City leads in one there. Camilla Hatsley in two from City of Glasgow. Three is Rosie Rudin of Nova Centurion. Amy Wilmot, fastest in the world, 4.33.64. Time set at the Flanders Cup in Belgium earlier on in the season. A lot of people think she's capable of going a bit faster than that. Is today the day that she can? 4.31.33, by the way, is the British record held by Hannah Miley, who has the second fastest time in the world this year, set in this very pool, the Scottish Nationals, last week. It's a lot to ask of Amy Wilmot to step up by that much, but she did look impressive this morning, and uh, she was eight seconds virtually faster than anybody else in this field, so it should be, providing everybody else doesn't uh, improve on their performance radically and drastically, and Amy Wilmot procession towards the end. Probably won't be Ross until about halfway, and then the race is pretty much Amy Wilmot's to the end. Yeah, that's what you, you would expect is Amy Wilmot, is, is on paper, is so much quicker than the rest of the field. You know, just two seconds outside that British record. So depending on what kind of form she is in, will depend on how much she, she should win this race by. Uh, the selection time for Amy Wilmot is 4.39.37, or should I say the nomination time for the Commonwealth Games. So she certainly will be, will be aiming for that with one eye on the surely the British record. But at the minute, it is Danielle Lowe that's taken this first 100 metres butterfly out. Danielle swims for City of Derby, coached by Olympian Melanie Marshall. And it looks like she's going to touch first for the first opening 100 metres. Now remember, four strokes, so things do change and they alter all the way through this race. So the early procedures, proceedings are not always uh, what to go by because it will change as the event unfolds. And it already is starting to do that before your very eyes. Amy Wilmot in four right alongside the likes of Ellis Jackson and Danielle Lowe. In fact, this is where Amy Wilmot starts to power her way through. She hasn't been leading up to this stage, but I think when they get to the next turn on the backstroke, she will be there or thereabouts. Daniel Lowe trying desperately to hold on to that lead, but I think this is going to be Amy Wilmot at the turn. 138.88. She's now going to lead off three quarters of a second over Danielle Lowe with Ellis Jackson in third. Yeah, and great skills from Amy Wilmot going about eight or nine metres off the turn underwater because you are faster actually to go underneath the water than on top of the water and she now is extending that lead over the rest of the field you did say she probably won't be leading after the first 100 150 meters but now she's starting to stamp down her authority on the rest of the, the swimmers and edge every stroke out in front 440.70 she clocked this morning we know she can go considerably quicker than that and will do this evening that's qualification time not much quicker than that or the possible qualification certainly the uh, nomination time is not that much quicker what she'll be looking for is to be in range possibly of the time that she set in belgium earlier on the season of 433.64 don't think there's too much doubt unless there's a disqualification we will wish that on her that she's going to win this comfortably the question is a how much in terms of meters is she going to win this by and probably more important from her point of view is what kind of time she's going to set yeah that's right ideally she needs to go 339.37 that's the, the nomination time for the commonwealth games later on this year in this very very pool but surely she's going to be wanting to go quicker than that and certainly going to have both eyes on the british record of 331.33 well she does three she'll be doing very well i think you mean four don't you oh yes sorry yeah, <laughs> would say, yeah that be would be a world record by quite some yeah, way absolutely fine yeah 431 sorry 33 too many threes in there 431.33 is Hannah Miley's 
British record. And uh, well, you see the gap is quite easy to measure here. It's very visible that this race is most definitely under control for Amy Wilmot with the 100 to go. 3.31.27 at the turn, so she's well in sight of that nomination time. Danielle Lowe is holding on to second place. Rosie Rudin is about four seconds behind her, so one, two, and three seem to be pretty well mapped out here. It's a question now, can Amy Wilmot power on on this last 100 freestyle? She's opening up a bigger, bigger advantage with every single stroke. The uh, biggest challenge she has, of course, is the clock, and she won't know that for just over another 50 meters. Yeah, she's definitely going to go underneath the nomination time for the England selection, but I think she's just going to miss the British record of 4.31.33. I think she's going to be a couple of seconds outside of that. But it'll be interesting to see how Danielle Lowe goes in lane number six. The selection time for the England team, or the nomination time, is 4.39.37, and she's going to be very, very close to it. She needs to hang on to the, the coattails of Amy Wilmot with the last 15 metres to go, but no doubt who the winner is here. Can she be Hannah Miley's time from last week? That's the question. Three, four, thirty-five, ninety-four. No, she can't. Hannah Miley went about half a second quicker. Now Danielle Lowe, four forty-two point four two for Danielle Lowe. That is a massive chance for her to uh, improve on her PB. It's only a slight little alteration for a slight advancement. But uh, that was an impressive display by Amy Wilmot, 4.35.94. Not, as I say, as quick as she went earlier on in the season for the Flanders Cup in Antwerp. And uh, perhaps she's a little bit disappointed with that. But uh, Daniel Lowe will be uh, uh, too disappointed. Yeah, she seemed to, to fade off down that last 50, did Danielle Lowe. She was on course for going under that nomination time, but just missed it. 4.35.94 then, so... Virtually uh, six and a half seconds between Amy Wilmot and Daniel Lowe in second place. Rosie Rudin posting 4.45.33 in third place. So that's the final of the 400 IM taken care of. And we are going to be hearing from the winner of that race, indeed, with the time that can now be nominated for England. And what a way to start off your British Championships campaign. You must be over the moon. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, I would have liked to maybe gone a little bit quicker, but considering the kind of the state I'm in, I can't really complain too much. Well, you have the Team England nomination time, so congratulations for that. Is there more in the tank for this summer? Yeah, definitely. Um, my PB is slightly faster than that. So fingers crossed in the summer, if I'm confirmed on the team, I can lower my time and fingers crossed rival some medals. Definitely. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. Yeah, a little tinge of disappointment perhaps there for Amy Wilmot. She didn't go uh, as quick as she had done earlier on in the season, but that should be hopefully sufficient for her to be both nominated and to be confirmed on the England team for the Commonwealth Games back in this pool in Tollcross later on in the year. Right, moving on to an event which has all kinds of possibilities and possibly has a British record on the end of it because the qualification time or the nomination time for the Commonwealth Games is 3.45. 3.45.24 is the British record that's currently held by a man we were speaking to earlier on tonight, David Davis. There's your 1-8 to eight for the men's 400 metres freestyle. Quite a lot of uh, Sheffield swimmers in here. In fact, uh, three current Sheffield swimmers and one former Sheffield swimmer in Matt Johnson, who's coming out onto pool deck now. Moved last year to the University of Bath, Max Litchfield is a former Doncaster Dart, now with the city of Sheffield. Here's Dan Fogg of Loughborough University. I'm sure he would love to see his uh, former teammate David Davis's British record. He's in seven. There's another of the Sheffield contingent. Tom Sunter going in lane number two. Nick Granger, another one from Sheffield. Slight buses are coming on at a rapid rate here. Nick Granger in six, and what do you know? Here comes another. Gareth Mills of Sheffield. Sounds like a Sheffield gala here. In lane number three. James Guy 
who I think most of us expect to win this, but there might be a, a man that uh, perhaps he wasn't expecting to challenge him, who did challenge him, and actually had a better time than him this morning. That is Jay Lelliot of oh, Bath University. Well, he did a four-second personal best this morning. I just wonder whether James Guy Ross was holding something back in reserve. Surely he was, and perhaps didn't expect Jay to beat him because they were both in the same heat this morning. I think he was only really aware of the danger in the last kind of, uh, 25 metres or so. Yeah, I've got to be honest, it was, it was a fantastic swim from Jay, but James Guy looked very, very, very comfortable this morning. And yeah, I saw him, he looked up into the crowd, looked at his dad, gave him a little wink to say, there's plenty more in there this evening, Dad. Well, I know the uh, Bath team, those who are not here, are watching to see exactly what Jay can perform in the final of the 400 freestyle. And James Guy will have his eye on that British record of David Davis. So just to clarify, the nomination time for England, 3.45.85. The British record, 3.45.24. And we should mention at this point, Ross, that was in the old suit days when David Davis did that time. Yeah, so it was way back in 2009 in Rome, the World Championships. So it is a new era of swimming now, since after the suits were banned. And it is a new era of swimmers that we're seeing competing here in Glasgow. And at the first 50, it is Nicholas Granger from the city of Sheffield that turns first in 25.69. And just to mention, Daniel Fogg's mum is watching on TV at home, so she'll be giving him a, a big cheer. Well, let's see what Foggy can do. Can he uh, cut through all the uh, Sheffield contingent and indeed the man from Millfield in James Guy? Well, this race will probably change complexion and change leader all the way through. Nick Granger, though, is setting the pace. He was leading at 50 and he leads at 100. 53.80 at the turn. James Guy in second place. Third is Max Litchfield. Jay Elliott in fourth. And just like Danny Fogg did this morning, just holding things together and waiting to pounce. Yeah, expect Daniel Fogg to come back stronger the last 200 metres. He might, to be honest, have too much to do because these guys are going out fast and that speed is not something that Daniel has got a lot of. He's more of an endurance swimmer, you know, doing the 10Ks and the 1500s. But at the minute, it still is Nick Granger that's turning just about 0.2 ahead of James Guy and they're going side by side. Expect James Guy to turn on the burners at 300 metres, but also expect Nicholas Granger to go with him. Well, Nick Granger, if he's to get that nomination time, has to improve by about five seconds on his personal best. That's an awful lot to ask of him, but he's holding off at the moment the challenger, James Guy, just at the turn, and only marginally by just over two-tenths of a second, still in the lead, but marginally so now. Nick Granger from James Guy in second, Max Litchfield in third, and fourth is Jay Lelliot. This may not be Danny Fogg's day. No, but it does look like it is James Guy that's starting to turn the screw on Max Litchfield, uh, on Nicholas Granger. He's just, he was about 0.2 behind at 200 metres, but he's now edging out in front and he's going to be a couple of tenths ahead. There he is, 1.16 ahead. Hardly anything to choose between James Guy in the lead, Nick Granger in second, Max Litchfield in third. So at the moment it is just Millfield, Sheffield and Sheffield. Now, has Nick Granger got something left in the tank? We know that James Guy most certainly has, but they are still side by side. There's still 100 to go, and he hasn't broken Nick Granger yet, James Guy, though I think that's what he intends to do. That's what's on his mind at the turn. Granger, great, great turn right alongside James Guy. Yeah, Nick Granger te technically is better than James Guy on, on the skills, on the walls, and on the start. But James Guy now is starting to move away yet again. But Nick Granger is not letting him move. And it's every time James Guy makes a move, Nick Granger responds incredibly well. But at the minute, it is James Guy that's starting to edge inch by inch further ahead. Well, providing he doesn't blow up over the last 50, whether he wins it or not, this will be quite a sizable PB, I think, for Nick Granger. But as we anticipated, as we expected, James Guy is going to win this. The question is, can he do a 3.45? He certainly can. He needs to come back in around about a 28.0. And if anyone can do it, James Guy can do it. And he is now starting to stretch away from the rest of the
of the field. He needs to get his dead down and focus onto that wall because there potentially could be a new British record on the cards. 3.45. Yes. 15. There you have it. The first British record in the able bodies swimming at the 2014 trials. Well done, James Guy. Yeah, David Davis's 400 meters freestyle British record has gone. Not a huge chunk, doesn't matter, does it? It's a brand new best time in Britain. 3.45.15 for James Guy. And just confirm for you, second place, a huge personal best too for Nick Granger. 3.47.31, this territory he's not been in anywhere near. And Dan Fogg with a very, very spirited finish, getting in at 3.49.17. So James Guy has set the British record, uh, though, of course, we can't confirm it yet. I think he'll be thinking about the Commonwealth Games later this year. Yeah, he's, he's got to be thinking about the Commonwealth Games later on this year. He's got, not confirmed. There's a finish. And he only got it by 0.1. But does money to get it by an inch or a mile? He is the new British record holder. And that'll be a fantastic feeling for James Guy, who still is a very... You know, he's a young lad. He's born in 1995, Bob. You're going to make me feel old again now, aren't you? Oh, hey? I certainly yeah. am. Even I remember when 1995 was. I, I, I don't know why he reminds me, and he does a great deal, of another James, James Hickman. It's that kind of same demeanour. When we hear the interview, which we will do shortly uh, down on Paul Deck with him, I think you know, there are certain kind of mannerisms which are very similar to James Hickman to me. He's just an incredible athlete. Absolutely incredible athlete. But all five summers, they're going under 350, and that's probably one of the first times it's happened in Britain. Dan Fogg in third, and Nick Granger in second. Let's hear from the new British record holder. Here's James Guy talking about his 400 freestyle. Unbelievable swim, two second personal best, and underneath the Team England nomination time. Where did that come from? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, it's been a great season so far. We're training with at home with all these guys at Millfield, and really spurred me on to do well this season. Fantastic. And last year, fifth at the World Championships. This year, British champion. You must just be riding on the crest of a wave right now. Yeah, it's going really well. And I can't thank enough for my family and my coaches at home. Brilliant. Thanks very much, James. Now, first of all, carry on, because that's two races. <laughs> you were up and down, up and down, <laughs> watching those. Let's talk about Amy Wilmot first before yeah. we move on to, to the men's event there. Great swim by her, very far out on the field, wasn't she? Yeah, she she was so far out ahead, and I think it is quite hard to kind of always be out there and, and to be that far ahead from quite early on, you know, from the backstroke here, she's already ahead, yeah. and that lead just grew and grew and grew, but she seemed... But I think a bit disappointed about that. Yeah, time. I was going to say in, the, in a post-race interview, she said she did seem a little bit disappointed, but she did a great time. Yeah, it was a good time. It was under the nomination time, but her PB is two seconds quicker than that, and she knows that she can go much quicker than that time. So she will be a bit disappointed, but she's got lots of other races to do this week. Yeah, she's got a, a busy schedule, hasn't she? Now let's move on. Let's talk about that race. <laughs> James Guy, what a swim! I know it was brilliant. Uh, when I went to see James, I was like, "So, what are your expectations for trials?" And, and I kid you not, he said domination I want to dominate I want to scare people and that's exactly why I did I'm so pleased for him to break that British record which you know was a suits record from 2000 around about 2009 so yeah just so pleased for him he definitely deserves that swim he does and domination is that going to be the the hashtag of the week I hope so I Carrie think it totally should do that should definitely be the hashtag for the week domination especially if he's going to be competing the way he did it's very exciting um, so moving on from the domination let's see what the ladies can do in the women's 200 meter freestyle final Let's see who is best out of this bunch. Shauna Lee in one, Caitlin McClatchy two, Rebecca Turner for Sheffield in three. The fastest this morning and one of the best times in the world this year, Siobhan Marie O'Connor in four, Jazz Cullen, the Welsh record holder in five, Ellie Faulkner in six, Libby Mitchell in seven, Amelia Morn in lane number eight. What are you expecting of this, Ross? Well, Kerry Ann's just been talking about domination and you know this this young girl in lane number four, Siobhan Marie O'Connor, absolutely dominated the heats this morning. I spoke to her a little bit earlier on and said, you know, I, I hope to, to go a little bit quicker tonight. You know, she's such a, a sweet and innocent girl and she just wants to try her best every single time. And you know what I like about her is she just goes out for it and she doesn't hold anything back. 
And she still has a deeper voice than you, which is impressive. <laughs> First 50 of the women's 200 metres freestyle. Siobhan Maria O'Connor won. 57.23 was her time this morning, which uh, ranks her already fifth in the world behind Schoestrom, McKeown, Barrett and Hemskirk. And then comes Siobhan Maria O'Connor. So I'm sure she will go quicker. So the time she'll be looking to overtake here, 157.08 of Hemskirk. In terms of getting... Uh, a possible qualification for the Commonwealth Games, certainly in terms of being put forward for it. Anyway, she has to 156.77, which is a very, very tough standard. And just look how far she is already, 75 metres. And, and, you know, you're looking down the, the start list, you've got Caitlin McCutcheon, the Commonwealth champion in 2006 on this event, Jazz Carlin, who won this event last year, Ellie Fortner, who went to the Olympic Games for this event, and yet Siobhan Marie O'Connor is turning three or four metres ahead of the rest of the field. Are we looking at Joe Jackson's record going here? Possibly. 155.54. Surely not. I hope so. Wouldn't that be nice? Especially because Joe's here and she can watch it being broken. That would be lovely. Well, she's going for it, i tell you that much, because she has to go for it, because it's 156.77, the nomination time for England. She's going to go much quicker than she did this morning, and she will be up there in the world rankings if she can keep it going. She's got another 50 to go here. 155.54. She's going to have to cross crack on and do a 28-29 here to get Joe's record, but qualification is definitely on the cards. Yeah, probably not the British record, but the nomination time is what she'd be aiming for, 156.77, and as long as she has a strong last 25 metres, she should be underneath that. She is a quality swimmer, an absolutely determined young athlete. It was just a pleasure to be around, and she is now starting to tie up, and it is looks like Jazz Carlin is starting to come back, but there's no doubt who the winner is going to be. Well, she's not too far outside that British record, 156.57. 59, that's good enough, or hopefully will be good enough anyway for Siobhan Marie O'Connor. Certainly in terms of being nominated, she will be for the England Commonwealth Games team. Already there, Jazz Carlin for Wales, 157.97 the time. And in third place, Becky Turner, 159.17. Remember, of course, there is a 4 by 2 relay to be considered as well when you look at this event. Absolutely storming swim underneath that nomination time. I think in time that record of Joe Jackson is going to be broken, but it lives, it will certainly survive to live another day. But well, what a quality swim from Siobhan Rio Connor from the University of Bath, 156.59. Third fastest in the world, faster than Bronte Barrett by two one hundredths of a second. Siobhan Rio Connor, Jazz Carlin in second, Eddie Faulkner in third, Kenny McClatchy for Scotland. So you have to look at uh, Rebecca Turner as the next English swimmer at 159.17. And we will hear from Siobhan, is she, a, is she a, an IM swimmer? Is she a breaststroke swimmer? Is she a freestyle swimmer? She does all those things. She does all those things exceptionally well. And, you know, we were thinking about her when we saw her in Shanghai as being a, a 200 IM, perhaps. And they were seeing her doing a bit of breaststroke, and she's pretty good at that, as she showed as uh, part of the, the medley when she's had a chance to show that. But it's, uh, as a freestyler, she's now the best we have in, in Britain. It's just amazing stuff. And I think that's taken quite a bit out of her. She's taking a long time to get out to the pool. But uh, we are going to hear some words of wisdom from a very, very talented young swimmer. And uh, Siobhan Marie O'Connor is going to tell us all about that fast time. Siobhan, congratulations. You've totally committed to that race right from the gun. Just talk us through it. Um, I know I had to place my strengths. Uh, there's a lot of girls in that race who can come back really fast. And I know I just had to be out fast and just try and hang on. And the Team England qualification time there of 1.56, really, really tough. Did you come into this thinking that was achievable? Um, you know, that's such a quick time. It's, you know, for like top, com top three in the Commonwealth. And uh, I would thought if I could make the relay, that would be great. But I knew that was always going to be a massive challenge that time. Clearly not too much of a challenge. Thank you very much, Siobhan. Thank you. Thank you. 
I think you just listed there, Bob, all the events that Siobhan Maria Connor is good at, and I think you can just really wrap it up and say she's an absolute quality athlete, world-class athlete that is good across the board. And it's so nice to see such a young swimmer that with so much talent is here in Britain and hopefully going to be pushing our sport forward. Well, have we found the English version of Hannah Miley there? Because she's kind of doing the same events and nearly the same events as Hannah does. Yeah, that's right. And you know, it'd be interesting to see what she has in her programme this week and what events she really targets. On to our one Paralympic event of the afternoon. And uh, we have a new British record this morning for Matthew Wiley of the city of Sunderland. He's going in lane number four. I'll give you the full lineup because there is a mix of different categories. Craig Smith is an S8, Morgan Peters an S9, as is Matthew Wiley with our new British record this morning. Ryan West, too, is an S9. Joseph Craig, the 100 and 400 world champion, goes in six. And Damien Eng of Maidenhead in seven. So that title is set this morning by Matthew Wiley. Season's best and also a British record of 58.95. Not time for applause yet, you haven't done the race. <laughs> Shortly though. Matthew Wiley going in four. New British record set by him. Can he go better? In the 100 freestyle tonight. So uh, representatives from Fife, Millfield, City of Sunderland, Gloucester, South Tyne and Maidenhead. And lane four, lane five, Ryan West and Matthew Wiley having decent starts. Let's see uh, whether those two can go head to head or whether it is going to be Matthew Wiley powering his way to the finish. And it looks pretty much like it from early in indications here. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't as good as Ryan West off the blocks, but he certainly has turned the screw over the next 25 metres. And he turns first in 28.07. So again, just to mark your card, time this morning, 58.95 for Matthew Wiley. We'll be hoping to improve upon that if he can. Ryan West will try and keep in his slipstream as long as he can with another 15 metres to go. All eyes away to our left towards the clock to see whether he can uh, come up with another storming finish. He's going to do it, I think, is he? 58.69 and it is a new British record for Matthew Wiley. Two in a day in the S9 category for the City of Sunderland swimmer who uh, is looking for a nominated time of 57.45. So he's got a bit of work to do on that yet, but he's closing in with every swim and that's a massive chunk he's taken out of the British record in the space of just over over seven hours. Yeah, another great swim. Post the British record this morning, and then it's going even faster tonight in the final. So that's two men's events tonight and two British records. Not bad. And second one of the day for him. Really good stuff. Could be thrilled with that. As they have their qualification tournament for the Commonwealth Games. In this pool next week, they are the only swimmer to go sub one minute. Matthew Wiley, 58 6 9. Second time he's done that today. Second British record of the day. Ryan West in second, Morgan Peters in third, and Joseph Craig is in fourth. And I think we're going to hear a word from the uh, British record holder. Matthew Wiley is going to talk us through how uh, he did it twice in a day. Here's the City of Sunderland swimmer talking on pool deck to Jody. Matthew, congratulations. Another fantastic swim from you. British record in the heats this morning. Gone one better in the final tonight. You must be over the moon. Uh, yeah, really happy, just moving forward from here to final, so really good, yeah. And what can we expect to see from you for the rest of the 2014 season? Um, IPC trials for Europeans next week, so maybe a qualifying time there, not sure, so you never know. And do you think you've got more in the tank after that race today? 
Um, yeah, there's definitely some things I can pick some speed up from there. So, yeah. Okay, well, good luck for that and congratulations for today. Well done, Matthew. Thank you. So, breaking a record twice in a day, that's, that's impressive going, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, he, he should be really happy with that. This yeah. isn't a selection qualification for him. His is actually next week. So, that he's swimming so fast this week here is only going to boost his confidence for next week. And a great warm-up as well for next week. Yeah. Now, speaking of warming up, we've just been having a chat about a, the great swim from Siobhan Marie O'Connor. And you, you mentioned about her taper, didn't you, it coming into yeah. the meet? Well, I actually went to see them only about two weeks ago. And Siobhan actually wasn't on taper yet, so I did the session with them and uh, it was really hard and I, I really struggled towards the end and it was a freestyle set that we did and she was flying so I was really good to see her swim really fast. Because I, I, it's safe to say she kind of dominated that force, she did dominate the field didn't she? She yeah. was right up there from the first 50, there was absolutely nothing holding her back. Is that yeah. what, what you saw when you were training with her? Yeah well she was a second ahead right from the first 50 which is really impressive and she's ranked third in the world now with that time which is you know it's, it's a brilliant thing to be third in the world is amazing yeah it is it was a great swim to watch and great action it is, it is getting better and better i know yeah. we keep saying it but it really really is isn't it now earlier on today you had a chat with john rudd is that right yeah well we just chatted about his new role as the the england team leader or the te england sorry the england team head coach this is what he had to say Hi, I'm here with John Rudd. Congratulations, John, on your new appointment as the England head coach. Thank you very much. So what are your expectations as a head coach for the England team? Well, we're obviously looking to swim as fast as we can this summer and um, get a really good international meet under our belt, you know, a couple of years out from an Olympic Games. Um, obviously, it's a competition in its own right that we want to win as many medals as we possibly can as the England team. But it's also the first stage as a, as a building process back towards Rio 2016 and, and starting to look at what athletes are likely to feature in that year. Now, the qualification process is a complicated one and the times are quite hard. Why is that? Well, we have an agenda now that we want to be taking swimmers on senior British teams that can win medals. Um, so, you know, to make sure we're taking that calibre of athlete along, the times have to be pretty tough. And for the reason I've just mentioned, in, in terms of preparing things for Rio, we've got to get the guys ready to swim fast at trials, fast in heats and fast in finals. And, uh, you know, no better time than to start it this year. And what will your role be as a head coach on the team? Well, I see myself as a, you know, as a mentor figure for the other coaches and a facilitator. I think that uh, a great head coach is a guy that runs around being everybody else's assistant coach, asking them if they need anything and do they, do they need some support and guidance. Um, you know, I'll have an overview of what's going on and, and, and talk to the group coaches each day about you know, what, where we can make things better. And um, So that's, that's kind of my role, is, is, to, is to help everybody out. Now, although you're going to be the head coach, you will still hope to have some of your own swimmers from Plymouth onto the team. Will you have anything to do with them while you're there? Well, I'll certainly be preparing them into the preparation camp for London. But the moment they're appointed to the team and we're on that camp, they'll be allocated a group coach, which, which won't be me because I have this overseeing role. And of course, I'll be talking to that group coach just as much as I will everybody else about my own athletes and what I think helps them to swim at their best. But, uh, you know, they'll be one of the one of the group coaches will be looking after them on a day-to-day -day basis okay great well thank you very much all the best for this week and i really hope that when the commonwealth games come in we've got some really world-class swimmers on the team so do i thank you thanks Great interview there with John Kerry Ann. He's it very chatty and very, very <laughs> positive as well about what's what's up to up and coming this year. Now, we've got some tweets coming in, haven't we? Yes. Have you got any tweets that you would like to answer? Kerry yeah, we've had a couple of tweets coming in. A few of them are, are a little strange, like one from um, from Joe says, uh, "Will this question ever have an answer? It's a question within a question. Probably not going to answer that and just say I'm really not sure." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, pass that on, but thank you very much for the tweet, <laughs> nonetheless. Uh, and then we also had a really good question from Harvey Falshaw, which is, um, do you feel as though swimming receives enough attention from the media and the public? Good question. Yeah. Which is obviously...
obviously a positive question since London 2012. Yeah, well, I think it, it's up to us as swimmers to, to create that attention, to create the, you know, the, the want for people to see it. And tonight, of the six races we've had so far, five people have done PBs. Yeah. You know, we've had two people under the nomination time. We've had a British record from James Guy. So I think if we can carry on with this stuff, it's a home Commonwealth Games as well for, for, the, Scot for the Scottish team. But, yeah. you know, it's not that far away for the English and the Welsh team as well. So I think if we can just carry the momentum of, of what London 2012 did, you know, we can move that forward in, into this year. Absolutely. Now, speaking of moving forward, don't forget to keep those tweets coming in. And Kerry Ann, of course, will answer as many questions with a question, with a question, within a question, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. We'll leave that one to later. But now we move on to the women's 50 metre breaststroke semi final. I'm confused. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Last week of Lee, but uh, yeah, keep your uh, tweets coming in to our uh, presentation team. Uh, just keep your reactions coming. I know there are clubs watching all over the country to the stream, especially in the city of Sheffield. I know that they've uh, got it up on the big screen. They will have been enjoying some of the swimming. Certainly Nick Granger's massive personal best in the 400 freestyle earlier on in the competition. We're moving on to the... Uh, so you want to... Ross now wants to say something, so I need to shut up so you can talk. Go on. <laughs> well, I just had a tweet saying, Bob, do you remember the first car that was ever built? I do, and I drove it. But yeah, I, I, I did the prototype for Henry Ford. It was black, of course. <laughs> You're setting people up to do this, or what? 50 minutes breaststroke, semi-final number one coming up. That's your one to eight. Molly Renshaw, but it knows the uh, 200 breaststroke had just snuck in in 16th place. Final qualification place she got. Uh, the uh, shout-outs for the clubs here, Bournemouth, Highland, Derwentside, Edinburgh, Hatfield, Isle of Man, they're here too. I don't think should be allowed to swim with three legs, but there you go. City of Salford in seven, and Molly Renshaw of Loughborough going in lane number eight. That's uh, our lineup for the first of the semi-finals. We've had finals up to this stage, but we've got a few semi-finals to come now. And this is uh, the splash and dash of the 50. This is what I call the washing machine race, because if your breaststroke goes wrong, you look like you're in a washing machine just going <laughs> round and round. Uh, is that how you swim then, Bob? As, yes. You've seen my breaststroke. That's <laughs> not pretty. Fortunately, all eight here have uh, pretty decent breaststrokes or else they would not be in the semi-finals here now who is going to make the running is it going to be Corey Scott or would it be Katie Armitage who did her personal best of 32-1-4 this morning this is an event where it is a splash and dash but you cannot rush your stroke if you rush your stroke on the breaststroke like you said Bobby it looks like you're in a washing machine I've never seen a swimmer in a washing machine but I'll take your word for it but it is looking like it's Corey Scott in lane number four that's going to take this first semi-final number one. And she does in 31.63. So that is another new personal best. Two in a day for Corey Scott. Second place going to lane number five. Sorry, lane number six. Uh, Laura Kinley. And third to... Just waiting for it to be switched around here. Yep, that's definitely Corey Scott's winning time. There you go, 31.63. Beth Aitchison in second, and Katie Armitage, 32.34. Winning time, 31.63. And uh, there is no nominating time in the 50 breaststroke for England. So, so for the English selection policy, I know Kariana has, has mentioned this before, but you cannot be selected on a 50-metre event unless you've already qualified for another event. Excusing the 50-metre freestyle, you can qualify for 50-metre freestyle, but you can't qualify for the backstroke, the breaststroke, or the butterfly on the 50-metre event. Now, Sophie Taylor, 31.04 this morning, is actually the fifth fastest time in the world this year, behind uh, Jay Johansson, Ruta Miliatite, Leeson Pickett and Dorothea Brandt. And then comes Sophie Taylor. Now, can she improve on that? 31.04 this morning. She goes in lane number four. So, clubs represented here. Devencio, two from Edinburgh. City of Leeds, Devencio, City of Derby, Preston and Swansea University. I think all eyes, though, will be on Sophie Taylor of the City of Leeds in lane number four. She can get away to a decent start. She's actually one of the quickest away from the blocks in a point six nine. Now, can she get under the 31-second barrier here? 
Well, she's only 0.2 away from top of the world rankings this year. But it doesn't look like it's actually going to be all her race, as it is lane number three, Catherine Johnson from Edinburgh University, is piling on the pressure onto Sophie Taylor. But here comes Sophie Taylor. She's going to come through to win this, I think. It's a great second 25. How good, though, is the time? That's the question. She's going to stop the clock at 31.41, so slower than she went in the heat. Slightly disappointing from that point of view, but still a win nonetheless for her. Second place going to Sarah Vasey of Dementio and third to Catherine Johnson of Edinburgh University. 31-4-1 the winning time, winning that over Sarah Vasey by 0.21 of a second. Probably just spin it, spun it a little bit from this morning, probably a little bit more relaxed this morning and got a little bit more purchase onto the water, got a little bit you know, more power, where today he probably just tried to rush the stroke and started to slip in the water and didn't really have that power and that connection with, with the stroke. So probably that's why she was you know, nearly half a second slower, but she won it nonetheless. Moving on to the men's 50 butterfly, again the semi-finals. Here's the lineup. And uh, Adam Brown in lane number four is a man we should be concentrating on here. He's certainly going to be either the quickest or probably the second quickest when it comes to the final. Man still based in the USA, only back in the country what, about 48 hours ago. We have about uh, a 30 second delay before underway. So I'm going to give you the 1 to 8 here of the semi final number one for the 50 butterfly. Lane one, Sean Campsey of Warren de Baths representing Scotland. Jamie Graham of City of Glasgow in two. Here comes the list. Liam Selby of Stockport in three. Adam Brown, Hatfield, but based in America, as I mentioned, in four. Warren Cannon of Bath in five. Leo Jags of Loughborough in six. Jamie Thorpe of City of Leicester in seven. And Craig Bauman of Carnegie is in lane number eight. Lucy Fly again, just to underline from an English point of view, there is no nominated time for this. Now, hopefully, Adam Brown and uh, to follow Ben Proud will be hoping to get uh, their times in the hundred. Well, actually, uh, Ben is mainly concentrated, of course, on the 50 freestyle and the 100 freestyle, as indeed is Adam Brown. There'll be the events they'll be focusing in on and targeting for later on in the year. Adam Brown's personal best time is 24.11. 24.32 in the heats this morning, so I'm sure there's a, a little bit left in the tank. We'll see whether he can produce it here. Personal best for Warren Cannon this morning of 24.41, and indeed for Liam Selby of 24.76. So, second and semi final of the men's 50 meters butterfly. Adam Brown going in lane number four. We prefer to be uh, in the pool doing the freestyle, but uh, like most uh, sprint freestylers, they like to have a splash and dash of the butterfly, and it should be him who comes through. He's such a strong, strong player in terms of uh, these kind of races. He's going to take this all the way to the wall. Question is, can anybody get close to him? And indeed, how close can he get to a decent time here? 23.96. First time he has ever been under 24 seconds in the 50 fly. That's a big new personal best for Adam Brown. Warren Cannon in second, 24-2-1. Liam Selby, 24.50. So two PBs in a day for Liam Selby and Sean Campsey in fourth place for Edinburgh. So Adam Brown goes into that, uh, well, quite exclusive club, the uh, sub-24ers. Yeah, brilliant swim from Adam Brown. He's yeah, six foot five, six foot six, and he's got such a big wingspan, and, and that certainly will help on the butterfly events. You've already mentioned that he is actually more suited to the 100 meters freestyle, where he can pop in, as you could just saw, a very decent 50 meter fly. But expect now Ben Proud in the second semi final to certainly be looking at that 23.96 and using that as motivation to hopefully go a little bit quicker. Ben has 
has been considerably quicker than that. There's uh, Russell Best around the 23-1 mark. 23-6-7 is his season's best. And he goes in lane four, flanked either side by Thomas Laxton and by Sam Horrocks. Stockport, Millfield, Loughborough, Plymouth, City of Manchester Aquatics, Sunderland and Glasgow all represented in the second semi-final of the 50 metres butterfly. How will Ben Proud respond to what he's just seen from uh, Adam Brown? Well, I think he'll be going for it. He doesn't have the final until tomorrow, so he can uh, have 24 hours to rest and recuperate. So Ben Proud off the blocks, 0.61. Fastest away, well, nearly actually. Ben Lowe slightly quicker from Millfield, but second fastest away, as is the Plymouth Moat these days. Yeah, they really do work on their reactions. Notice if they can knock off point one on the reactions, then it's point one they have to find in the race. And it is certainly Ben Prowse's race, head down into the finish 23 4 9. Very easy, very nice. Job done. Anthony James at Plymouth 1 2 there. Because Anthony James 23.93, but fastest time. In there, 23.49, and that is the seventh fastest time of the year. Just slotting in between Evgeny Sedov of Russia and uh, Nicolas Santos of Brazil. At times, 23.5949. Roland Schumann, uh, Yehudi Serkin of Belarus, Govorov of Ukraine, Manadou of France, Chelo. Stayed off and then Ben Proud 23.49, Anthony James of Plymouth in second, and Thomas Laxon 24.36 the third place. What a great uh, couple of events we had there. Let's talk about the rivalry between the ladies first off. Yeah, so in the women's breaststroke, we have Corey Scott and Catherine Johnson. Although they're Scottish, they're, they do have a fierce rivalry. Last week, one won the 50, the other one won the 100. So they train together every day as well. So they constantly know what their rivalry is like. If one has a good day, one has a bad day. Which so, is what we love, of course, yeah, isn't it, exactly. Carrie? We love a bit of rivalry <laughs> here. Um, now, training together is obviously a great advantage, but also a disadvantage in the fact that they want to win and they want to yeah. beat each other, don't they? Which is, what, again, what we love to see. Yeah, well, I think it's really good. I think it's, it's important to have a healthy friendship but at the same time rivalries that you can really push you forward push you on to what you want to do um, you know because if you're not ever getting challenged in training then you're never really gonna well you're not gonna improve as as quickly as you should do yeah but then yeah. we also had Sophie Taylor on from the English side of things she swam a little bit slower than she did in the heat this morning I think she'll be a little disappointed with that time I think she looks like she was maybe a little under pressure I think she's not right. long been on the on the scene so yeah you know, this is kind of a, a big a event thing. isn't it for her yeah she seems like she's quite happy to kind of just blend in with everybody rather than to be the one on top so tomorrow night will be a really interesting swim and speaking of tomorrow night how are these how are these swimmers going to rest between now finishing the the semi-final to the final tomorrow yeah so there's no breaststroke girls event tomorrow morning so they can probably just come in have a little paddle just get all the lactic acid out of their system but then it'll just be about resting up and getting ready for that final tomorrow night uh -huh. and any words of advice for them particularly when you say sort of younger <laughs> juniors and things have getting a bit nervous for, for big events yeah what, what was your game plan coming into a big competition like this? Uh, well, I mean, 50s are very different for me. I'm not yeah. sure if there's a different process. My race is 10K, 50s are slightly different. But mentally kind of preparing yeah. yourself for that pressure of knowing that you are going to perform, but yeah. you are still equally really, really nervous. Yeah, so I think it's just going to be about, like I said um, earlier today when we talked about it, it's going to be about them just concentrating on their own performance, on their own races, and trying to get as, as quick as they can. Yeah, OK. And then the Adam Brown swim was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, great for him to go under 24 for the first time, so he'll be really pleased with that swim, I think. Absolutely. And Twitter, we've had a few more a few more bits, but just before that, uh, we're just going to have the have a look at the gold medalist. It's really nice to see uh, Siobhan up there getting that gold medal. Um, she looks always a little bit nervous, I think, when she stands up there, but 
Um, yeah, really nice to see her up there, and uh, she's got a really long week, a really big event. But, um, and a long week, but what an incredible first day to be stood there <laughs> yeah. on the top of the podium. Surely that's going to give her lots of confidence for the rest of the event. Yeah, I think that she's just going to keep getting better, keep getting better as the week goes on, so she's going to be one to watch for the rest of the week. Uh -huh. Now, you've got some tweets, haven't you, yes. carry on. I do. So we had a tweet from uh, from Mandy Sixman saying, um, how heavy an impact can rising stars such as Jane's and such as Siobhan have on getting more schools into swimming? So something Great that's quite, yeah, quite close to my heart. Um, I think we need to get the children involved. And a lot of it is to do with the infrastructure and, um, you know, getting people around there. But in Britain, we're doing really well at the moment with more 50 meter swimming pools. So we have, we have two where we are right now, believe it or not. There's one here and then there's one kind of just under those stands over Which there. Which people never believe, do they, when you say there's another pool? Where? Yeah. Where could that possibly be? Just under be? those stands <laughs> over there. Um, we have a new 50 meter pool in Aberdeen. Um, so in Scotland, you know, they're, they're doing really well with 50 meter pools. We have the new Olympic pool as well. So I think we, you know, if we can show these swimmers as, as role models to all these kids that it's a life skill that you learn when you swim, but it's also a great way to keep fit and you can really succeed in and doing it if you put your mind to something. Mm -hmm. And another tweet as well, seeing you on the one show last night talking about the, the Pools for Schools project as well. Yeah, so um, what we were, we were doing down in London was uh, with the Make a Splash the, uh, scheme, sorry, and it was taking swimming pools to the schools. So basically we're trying to get as many kids as we can swimming. And the school that I went to, which was Daubney Primary, uh, 650 kids were there, and their challenge was in three months to teach all of them to swim 25 metres. And then we went off to the Olympic pool, and they all swam 25 metres. And it did bring a little tear to my eye when I saw a couple of them that really struggled at the beginning. But yeah. it was just so nice to see them all swimming and see the smiles on everybody's faces when they finished their 25 metres. And one little boy was like, feel like a champion. And it was just Aww. so nice to see. It is so nice to see because these children having the opportunity, which they wouldn't normally do, would they? So to have that pull there for the children to be going in and participating in a sport that yeah. they probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to do and to see great results must have been amazing for you. Yeah, no, it was really nice. A lot of them had never learned how to swim and it's the same in a lot of schools. You know, we, we do struggle with, uh, with pools in and around the area. So what the scheme is doing is trying to get more and more swimming pools out to the schools themselves. So sticking them in their playgrounds, sticking them in the, in the local green if there is a local yeah. green like that. So it's about getting all these kids, just getting access to pools, basically. Yeah. Well, let's take a look now at Matthew Wiley getting his gold medal. So Matthew Wiley there, great swim earlier on tonight, carry on. Yeah, getting two British records in one day is going to be a really, a real big confidence boost for him. Yeah, that's, that's kind of unheard of, isn't it? But we like that, the uh, British <laughs> Gas Swimming Championships, you yeah. know, two records in a day, that's what we love. <laughs> so in terms of what we've seen so far today, um, we're still happy with, with what we've seen and we're still happy with our tweets because you, you were asked by Lauren quickly, I think, to give her a wave, yes. weren't you? Yes, hi Lauren, wherever she is. <laughs> so she's sat over there, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Kerry ann she asked you to give her a little wave. So yes. don't forget to keep your tweets coming in. Ask Kerry ann any question you like, within reason, of course, <laughs> and she will read your tweets out and answer them as well. We've had some great questions coming in. A lot of information, a lot of people asking about schools, pools for schools as yep. well, and young children being inspired, particularly Kerry ann by people such as yourself that's bringing a lot into the sport and great to have you here as well the British swimming champs on this Thanks. side of the camera now we're going to move on now to the women's 100 meter butterfly semi-final here's the lineup then for the first of the two semi-finals of the 100 meters butterfly Manchester Guildford Loughborough Plymouth Cockermouth and East Lothian all represented there we had a close in one, down to Raquel Matos in eight. Quite a few PBs this morning. Emma Day with a new one, Rachel Kelly with a new one, Charlotte Atkinson as well, and Anna Newland all went faster this morning than they had previously done. Let's see whether Rachel Kelly with the second fastest time of the morning can do likewise tonight. She goes in four for Loughborough. Two Loughborough swimmers in this. In four, Rachel Kelly. Sophie Smith is in lane number six. Two lengths of the Glasgow pool, leading 
best swimmer in the world at the moment is Sarah Schoestrom with a 56-53. I think we expect anything approaching that. The time that they are looking for is uh, for their English, around about 57.96 for qualification consideration anyway for the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, that's certainly right. It is in the minute. Rachel Kelly from Loughborough University turning first in 27.60, being coached by James Gibson, the former 50 meter breaststroke world champion. So he knows a thing or two about sprinting. It is Rachel Kelly at the minute in the center lane, leading the rest of the field with only 25 meters to go. Rachel Kelly at the moment holding off the advances of Charlotte Atkinson and Sophie Smith. They're both coming strongly towards the end, but it looks like Rachel Kelly has got enough in the tank to hold them off by about half a body length to a body length advantage at the end. 58.84 is the time for Rachel. Not quite as quick as she has been this season, but nonetheless that will do in terms of progression to the final, I'm sure. There's something rather strange happens in the second semi-final. In second Play Sean Atkinson 59-33, Georgia Barton, the other one of the three swimmers to go sub 60. Sorry, in that semi-final, quite a few of the, the young swimmers starting to step up. Now, you mentioned Emma Day doing a PB this morning. She won the European Silver, European Junior Silver Medal last year, and Georgia Barton is also. Born in 1995, Rachel Kelly 1994, Charlotte Atkinson 1996. So th these swimmers are now starting to, to step up and challenge the most senior swimmers that we'll see in this semi-final. Well, I'll resist the temptation to do an M&M, &M, but look who's back, back again. Siobhan Marie O'Connor in lane number five. Fran Housel in four for Loughborough University. And uh, Loughborough also represented uh, by Eleanor Sheridan in eight. There are two bar swimmers side by side. Side. She won Marie O'Connor and Tilly Gray and Sophie Allen's back as well. She's in lane at number two. Really looking forward to seeing Fran Housel in this semi final number two going against Siobhan Marie O'Connor. Fran never likes to be beaten in anything, whether it's a game of cards or a swimming race. So, you know, expect her to, to be out there in front. But Siobhan, and we've already seen an in cracking form so far. Fran, the fastest Brit in the world this year, 58.21. The scrap between her and Siobhan in the adjoining lane should be very interesting now. Fran, of course, better known mostly for the 50 and 100 freestyle, but she's done some very good times in both the 50 and 100 butterfly. But look at Siobhan Marie O'Connor. It's not so long come out of the fall from the 200 freestyle. Does she worry about that? Is she concerned about that? Not a jot. No, but I would expect Francesca Housel to be turning first at the 50 meters and then probably expect Siobhan Marie O'Connor to try and reel her in. Both these girls like to go out fast, but Fran is more of a sprinter than Siobhan Marie O'Connor. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to come down to the finish. But like I said, Fran does not like to be beaten anything. So she's going to be digging deep. Even though it is only the semi-final, she doesn't like to be beaten by anyone. Well, she doesn't. And Siobhan is probably just behind her. But there's not much between Fran Housel and Siobhan Marie O'Connor. It is going to be Fran Housel, I think, with about uh, seven or eight meters to go. Now, what kind of time could she post here? 58.33. Look at the gap between first and second. One, one hundredths of a second between Fran Housel and Siobhan Marie O'Connor. Alice Thomas of Swansea does a 59.31. That's uh, her new per personal best as well. 59.44 prior to today. That's uh, one, two, and three all under 60. And Fran Housel holding on literally by a fingernail. Yeah, we kind of uh, we kind of called it. You know, she's going to be out there fast, and uh, Siobhan's going to be trying to reel her in. And you know, she just got her fingertips to the wall. That one one hundred quicker than Siobhan. But Fran's hoping to qualify for the Commonwealth Games in five events: so the hundred meters butterfly, the fifty free, the hundred free, and a couple of relays, and even the fifty meters backstroke as well. So she's going to have a busy program this week. There's confirmation of the result for you, and uh, literally as tight as you can get. One one hundredth between first and second, Alice Thomas in third. All three of them will progress to the final tomorrow night. Here's the start list for the first semi-final of the men's 100 metres backstroke. Chris Walker-Heaven, 
had a very good end to 2013. Looks to kind of pick up where he left off in the short course season with a long course time. Marco Lockram, who's uh, been racing him for many years, is also alongside him, Xavier Mohammed in three, and of course we have Liam Tancock, who is marginally the fastest qualifier from the heats into the semifinals, going in the final semifinal. After this, so Chris Walkerben going in four. Just waiting for the uh, swimmers to come out onto pool deck. Here they are. Andrew McGovern in one, City of Aberdeen, Jonathan Carlisle, City of Sunderland in two, Xavier Mohammed now in Cardiff. He's been there for a while actually now. Chris Walker Heaven of Ellesmere, though he does swim in Bath in four. Marco Locker in a Guildford in five, Liam Knight. Now being looked after by Ian Armago, who's back in the fold at Loughborough. Ryan Bennett of the University of Stirling, just up the road in seven. And Cockermouth, Luke Greenbank is in lane number eight. Well, is this the emerging year for Chris Walker Heaven? He's been there or thereabouts, made world championship teams, made Olympic teams, never quite pushed on, perhaps with uh, the spur of a, a good short course season. This is time for him to move on. Yeah, really, I think. I think last year gave him so much confidence and he's, he's now dropped the 200 metres backstroke out of his programme and I think that was probably holding him back a little bit that he, he felt like he had to concentrate on the 200 metres backstroke. He actually made his breakthrough in 2009 and he qualified for the World Championships on the 200 metres backstroke. So now, now he's dropped it, I think he's, you know, he can just focus on the 100 and I think that's why we're seeing him swim so well. Chris Walker Heppen, personal best of 53.38 going in lane number four. Marco Lochran's been in the low 54s, not quite in that range this morning. And uh, Liam Knight, of whom uh, there's much hope in the Loughborough fraternity for him to move on, is in lane number six. But it is Chris Walker Heppen, as he did in the heat this morning, setting the pace and uh, unlikely to be headed in this company in this kind of form. He turns in 26 11, rapid second, Marco Lochran, and third is Andrew McGovern who swims for uh, the University of Aberdeen. Another commanding swim here in the pool in Glasgow. This time it is by Chris Walkerhaven. Bather already having a fantastic meet with Siobhan Marie O'Connor. And now Chris Walkerhaven destroying the field in this opening semi-final. A time of 54.01. So just outside the nomination time for Team England of 53.73. But that will easily get him into the final tomorrow night. And he'll have another crack at getting that nomination time. Season's best, though, for Chris Walker Heaven. And that will be the time that will take him through quite comfortably to the final. Marco Locker in 55, 3, 6, and seconds. How Walker Heaven finished the race off. You can see how far he is now. He's going to lunge back into the wall to post that 54.01. He looks quite comfortable. Nice new haircut. Modelled himself on you, Bob. I wouldn't want anybody to do that, Ross. I really wouldn't. Uh, uh, not my barbers, anyway. Uh, 54.01, uh, Marco Locker, 55.36, Javier Mohamed, Liam Knight. We'll have to probably sit and wait for a while, see whether he can make it a 55.77. It's been really interesting to see how Liam Tancock responds to a disappointing year last year. I say disappointed because he was injured and he couldn't do what he wanted to do. He was the reigning world champion for the 50 metres backstroke and he wasn't able to defend his title as he had a shoulder injury. But credit to Liam, he didn't, he didn't sing, and, sing and dance about his injury. He just got on about it and uh, went about his business very, very professionally like he always does. So now he's... They've been back in the pool a couple of months, sorted his shoulder out. It'll be interesting to see how he gets on in 2014. Well, Liam Tancock is Ali G with that beard. It's uh, has had a shave since this morning because it, it was a full beard this morning. But uh, Liam Tancock has um, had a partial shave. I imagine that's, that might be the last we see of the, uh, the George Michael look. 
Liam Tancock going in for Joseph Cannon, Shaw, City of Oxford now in one. John Blasinski of Nottingham in two. Charlie Bolson, the University of Surrey in three. Liam Tancock, Loughborough, four. Five, Joseph Patching of Plymouth. The two Loughborough swimmers, Joe Elwood and Sam Strawn. Then Kunmi Ogunfebo of Beckenham goes in lane eight. This is all about what Liam Tancock can do. Liam Tancock looking good in terms of his height in the water. How's he looking in terms of time? 26.19 is Tancock's turning time. So he's turned eight one hundredths of a second slower than what Chris Walker did in the first semi-final. I expect Liam to probably go to around about 80 metres and then start to back off. Uh, but this is getting back to the Liam of old now, starting to dominate event, the 100 metres backstroke here in Britain. And it just seems to just be easing off as we come into the final 10 metres. Yeah, job very comfortably done. Ooh, not the grace of finishes, though, I've got to say. That is not a great Liam Tankold finish. He was kind of stretching a bit there at the end. That might have lost him a bit of time. 54-6-7 for Liam. Second, Charlie Balderson. And third, Joe Patching. The winning time for Liam, 54-6-7. Look at this finish. There's George, as you call him, Georgie Michael. Give us a song, George. Let's go outside. Well, if you want to, Ross, I've got, <laughs> got a job to do here, mate. No, this is a great swim from Liam. It's good to see him back on form. And hopefully he can put his disappointing year behind him last year and focus on the Commonwealth Games if selected. He's an event that he won back in 2010. Good head-to-head -to -head tomorrow night. Liam up against Chris walker and That will be one of the uh, more enticing finals that you will have on day two. So we're moving on to the men's 200-metre breaststroke. Need I even say his name? Michael Jameson. Yes. I'm sure when he comes out, the crowd is going to go <laughs> mental. As they always do. Yes. Um, home crowd, home pool. What are your predictions for this event? My prediction is that I think he's going to go really quick. I know that he wants to go quick time tonight. Who knows? I mean, the world record is always within reach, I think, of Michael, with, of his ability. So I think a world record, but I mean, who knows? And Scottish swimmers dominating the field. Yeah, well, there's, um, I think there's at least four Scottish swimmers in this final, so um, it'd be a tough, it's been tough for the English guys to even make it. Um, but, yeah, really, really good that there's such a strong breaststroke community in, in Scotland and, you know, and in England now as well. And producing great swimmers and producing swimmers for us to aspire to be as, as fast as. I mean, his Olympic um, victory was a silver medalist was incredible, wasn't it, for the sport? Yeah, it was so good. I think what he's done for breaststroke in the country is great. Okay. Fabulous. Well, let's move on now to the men's 200 metre breaststroke final. Yeah, we certainly have been looking forward to this. Absolutely no doubt about it. One of the events of the week. Is it going to be Andrew Willis, Michael Jameson, or Adam Peaty? Probably Michael Jameson, but uh, there's a little um, score to settle, I think, between the two Bath training mates. And Adam Peaty uh, certainly pushed uh, Andrew Willis all the way this morning. So Adam Peaty is the emerging one. Andrew Willis is the English record holder. And, of course, the uh, man now coming out of the pool deck is the Olympic silver medalist, a man who had a bit of injury last year, which is why he finished fifth at the World Championships, but he's back on form as his uh, best time in the world this year proved when he swam it last week in Glasgow. Absolutely incredible athlete, Michael Jameson. But, you know, Adam Peaty is emerging talent more for a 100 meter breaststroke but he is trying his look at the 200 meters breaststroke as well and andrew willis will always be there or thereabouts made the olympic final back in 2012 and the world final last year in barcelona so now you've seen some you see some already two world-class swimmers in michael jameson andrew willis and an emerging talent in adam Peaty. right let's get ready for this it's gonna be a good one Whatever happens, whoever wins it. And so we a lot riding on this. Michael Jameson, fastest in the world at 2.08.01. Over half a second quicker than Christian Sprenger. World record is Daniel Gierters at 2.07.23. Not to ask. 
But if he's going to do it, he's going to want to do it in his own pool, which this is. I know he trains in Bath. He is from Glasgow. Big Celtic fan is Michael Jameson. Now, how is he going to swim this? Because he has swum it uh, different ways. He sometimes waits until the second hundred before he really makes his move. He knows exactly how Andrew Willis is going to swim it alongside him in A4. Probably doesn't quite know how Adam Peaty is going to swim it. Also, doesn't know how Rob Holderness, who's already qualified for Wales in lane seven, is going to swim it. Yeah, Rob Holderness always comes back strong over the last hundred meters. Adam Peaty expect him to be out there in first for the, probably the first hundred meters, and he is turning first in 29. Points. So just slightly slower than his heat time this morning on the opening 50. Michael Jameson turning in second, nearly half a second behind, and Andrew Willis 1 100 behind in third. So it's tight, it's tight, but already you can see now Michael Jameson starting to stretch out. He's taking the lead. Andrew Willis is watching every move, and Adam Peaty is still in the mix. Three of them going to the wall together. 2.10.61 is the time for nomination for the English swimmers, who at the moment are in second and third place. And not surprisingly, Michael Jameson's getting the roar of the crowd. He led at the 100 stage. Adam Peaty right alongside him. Andrew Willis now in fourth place. Rob Holness is having a storming swim on the far side in lane seven. Yeah, Robert Holdenus from Millfield. Obviously, just seen James Guy break the British record in the 400 metres freestyle from Millfield. So he's training with the likes of him. But it is at the minute still Michael Jameson is going to turn first in 134.74, point nine of a second ahead of Andrew Willis. And it is Rob Holdenus that turns third. Michael Jameson, 208.01 in this pool last week. Fastest in the world. He is the fastest in Great Britain of that, there is no doubt. Andrew Willis can't keep with it. Him. Adam Peaty can't keep with him. Michael Jameson against the clock, as he so often is. How quick can he be here? Can he go quicker than he did this time last week? I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to get in the 207 range. He stops the clock. No! Whoa! 207.79. Half a second outside the world record, but the quickest of the week and the quickest of the year. Michael Jameson, 207.79. Adam Peaty in second, 209.40. And he has also got the nomination time for the England team as well. That's the fastest by some way that he has ever been. The time for Andrew Willis, 209.85. He too is inside the time for nomination for the England team. And uh, Rob Holness, although he's already made the team for Wales, is disqualified in lane number seven but it's all about the man with the GB cap looks like England have done pretty well from this too but not anywhere as well as Michael Jameson has done it yet again rarely fails to deliver 207.79 look at the margin of victory there 1.75 pretty much one and three quarter seconds between first and second. Andrew Willis going under 210. So the two Englishmen would be hopeful of getting on the England Commonwealth team. But Michael Jameson, well, he's faster in the world by quite some way. Take that everybody else. I think we need to hear a few words from the ambassador for Scottish breaststroking. Michael Jameson is on pool deck and is going to give us a few words of wisdom time this season and you seem to be swimming nomination times for fun at the moment talk us through that race yeah I was a bit better than last week um, all my coach was watching this because that was faster than last week which means I've just earned just over a four week taper from now on <laughs> and you mentioned last week you swam a brilliant time of 208 a world season's best at the time how did you prepare coming into this meet knowing that you'd already got the Team Scotland qualification time uh, the past few days, it's, I've not really been sure what to do, to be honest, and I've ended up just floating around in the warm-up pool. Um, but I think it's, I mean, last week it was job done for me, really. It's obviously nice to be back home, and um, Scottish and British Gas have put on a great couple of events in the last few weeks. And as you can see, uh, you know, it's a worthy venue of, uh, you know, a meet the stature of the Commonwealth Games this summer. And I've got to ask the question on everyone's lips. Olympic silver medal in London 2012. Can we expect you to go one better this summer? Well, I hope so. I'm starting to get bored of these silver medal finishes. So I'm doing everything I can in preparation for the summer. So, you know, hopefully I can stay on top of the rankings for a bit longer. Congratulations, M Day. Fantastic swim. Yes, thank you.
Now, I just, I love listening to his interviews. It's just like, oh, you know, I just know what to do with myself and I'm sick of these silver medals, you know. He's just so relaxed. Normally in a, a post-race interview, yeah. people can hardly breathe. After a swim like that, you would have expected that, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, he's just such a competitive person that even though that was such a great time, he just wasn't happy with it. He wanted to go quicker than that and he can go quicker than that. But yeah, just to float around and, you know, he made it public that him and his coach could, uh, you know, take another four-week taper. Should be quite yeah, good. Well, we can see uh, on the screen there, he was strong from the start, wasn't he? I mean, yeah. we discussed about Willis there, you know, is he, he going to have some competition? But he just did what he does best and he led the field, didn't he? What was great about Michael was that it was his underwater work that was just phenomenal. That is where he's won this race. He just blew everybody else out of the water because his underwater work was so great. It was indeed and a great race to watch. And he must have been pretty tired after the event last week, the Scottish Championships. To come in and do a time like that is great, isn't it? World class. Yeah, I think um, he was really hoping for a quicker time this week, and I think that was his preparation, was it geared to this race to be the better one. OK, and, and from that as well, we've seen other races as before that. Liam Tancock in his backstroke. We weren't sure what we were going to get there. Good yeah. swim. Hasn't shaved the beard off yet, though, Kerry ann <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> no, it's looking... I'm hoping there's less every time, so maybe by tomorrow it'll be gone. OK, well, we're going to move on now to... That's a, the last of our senior finals. It's the women's junior 200-metre freestyle. Here's the star list for the junior 200 freestyle for the girls. And the clubs that are represented are Warrender, City of Sheffield, City of Birmingham, Swin Gwynedd, Chelsea and West, Preston, Sedgefield, and Bridge End City. They are the one, two, eight for the junior 200 freestyle final. We saw that amazing time from Siobhan Marie O'Connor earlier on. Hopefully, an inspiration, Ross Davenport, to the ones who are in the pool right now. Yeah, that's right. She's not that much older than these girls, so uh, you know she, the way that she's progressed through the ranks, you know, making the World Championship team in 2011, to then going on to the Olympics, to then being you know the, the fastest, one of the fastest girls in the world in, in the space of three years, is remarkable. And you know, these girls can hopefully follow in that footsteps. They can see the pathway from where they where they are now to where they can be in four years. And obviously, in that time, you've got the Commonwealth Games and also the Olympic Games. Game. So, you know, the opportunities are out there for these girls if they want it and they want to work hard at it. Catherine Greenslade did a new personal best this morning of 204.92. She's right up there. In fact, there's uh, join leaders at the halfway stage. 10071 for Catherine Greenslade and Hannah Featherston in lanes six and seven. Fastest qualifier, Mary Davis, has done a 20281. That's her personal best, which she did in the heat morning. Expect her to make a move. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, pretty much in the line from lane four right through to lane seven. It's really tight. It does look like it is going to be lane number five that's turning first. Or lane number four, sorry, Mary Davis in 131.95. Half second ahead of Georgie Ball. Boyle from Chelsea and West. It's going to come down to this last 25 metres now. Who's got the strength? Who's got the power to finish this race off? Looks like Mari Davis, who was the fastest qualifier from this morning for the junior final, is just about to hold on. She's getting some pressure on her, though, from the Chelsea Westminster swimmer Georgina Boyle, but it will be Murray Davis. 202.40 is a new personal best. Two in a day for Murray Davis. Second place going to Georgina Boyle, 202.73. And uh, for her, that's the first time she's been in that kind of ballpark. It's uh, about a second and a half personal best for her. Hannah the son of Sedgefield in third, 204.25, and that's how all the others fared. These swimmers will be getting great experience. They've just watched Michael Jameson put a world-class time in, and then they've got to follow in the very, very next event. They've seen him in the call room. They'll see how he acts and how he approaches the swim. And hopefully they can learn lots of lots of uh, experience from this going forward. Because, like I said, this, these girls could be the future for, for British swimming in, you know, in two years or, or six years' time moving on to Tokyo. And certainly from a 
men's perspective or juniors perspective coming up they'll be looking at what michael jameson has achieved in the tournament of breaststroke to see whether they can be thinking about emulating something similar when they get to his age he's the kind of uh swimmers looking forward to for tokyo really 2020 warrenter portsmouth birmingham taunton dean plymouth derwinside and guilford all represented in that order on the one to eight Fastest in the field from this morning, Charlie Atwood, who has been as uh, quick as 2.16. He's about four seconds outside that, so I think he might be playing possum a bit. We'll wait and see tonight. He'll be looking to do something a lot quicker than that. Personal best from the swimmers in lanes two, three, five, and seven, and eight indeed this morning. So about uh, more than half the field did personal best in the heats. They have to. They have to do the, the personal best in the heat to make these finals. Only the fastest eight juniors. There's no semi-finals. I said there's already a great opportunity to swim in the Commonwealth Games pool here in Glasgow in front of a big crowd. Luke Davis, 2:21.87. That was a. Uh, Sizable Chunky took out his personal best. Massive uh, drop down for Joshua Winnicott. About uh, four seconds on his personal best. And Joel O'Haran, and they've been down to 223 until this morning. But Charlie Atwood has been considerably quicker than everybody else in this field from Taunton Dean. So 216 before today. So if he uh, carries that out in this race, should win this by a couple of seconds but wasn't quite in that kind of form this morning this is the junior 200 meters breaststroke uh, who is going to be the emerging talent from england because they're all from england who has one scott in lane number one daniel lim who's going to be the andrew willis of the future well, scotland have got a massive tra tradition in the scottish in, in the breaststroke events as has england so you know it's, it's a tough event to break into just seeing the the senior final the three guys going under 210 ross murdoch who didn't swim this from scotland also went into 2 210 last week so you know, these guys they see where they've got to go they've raised the bar the senior swimmers have now the juniors have got to try and step up and topple them away from the, the top of the plimp in a couple of years four five and six not quite in a line because charlie atwood has got the early pace on this one coming into 100 and then five and six virtually together going into the wall in fact they are absolutely together going into the wall 106 61 so just over a second gap between atwood and the rest and uh, say atwood has the fastest time on paper but he's been going to be pushed and is being pushed all the way by jack burton in lane number six jack burton's on this storming third 50 but he's starting to turn the screw on the rest of the field. Looks like it's not quite neck and neck, but Jack Burton is closing by every stroke as we're coming into the final turn. Well, the Plymouth Leander swimmer does have a 218 as his personal best, so maybe we shouldn't be that surprised that he's giving Charlie Atwood a very good race. And it's going to be these two, I think, who are going to go head to head. The others will be looking at the minor placings, but look at this. Lane four, Charlie Atwood, Jack Burton for Plymouth on the far side in lane six. And it looks like the Plymouth swimmer has probably got a little bit more in the tank. His pace is perfectly well. He turned at the 100 meter mark and really turned the afterburners on. And now he's storming down this final 50. And he's going to win at the junior men's 200 meters breaststroke here in Glasgow. 218.14 was previously his best time. Well, welcome to the 217s for Jack Burton. 217.22 for him. Charlie Atwood in the end finishing a second and a half behind him in second place. Third to Daniel Lim, but that is a very, very good swim. And there's something in the water in Plymouth because they've done it again. Yeah, I'm really impressed the way he paced that race. Didn't go out too fast. Charlie Atwood took it out for the first 100 meters. Jack Burton is biding his time. Swam his own race and he came away with the win. Yep, they're producing them uh, in all disciplines at all distances now in Plymouth. 
John Rudd and his team doing a very good job down there at Plymouth Leander. As that proved, Jack Burton with a new personal best, 217.22, Charlie Atwood, 218.88, and Daniel Lim, the other one to go sub 220. Still some work to do to get them in the higher echelon of men's breaststroking, but that's the start, and a very good start it is, too, for Jack Burton, who takes the junior 200 breaststroke final. So what a great swim there uh, from Mari Davis in the women's 200 meter freestyle final. You were happy with that one, weren't you, Kerry-Ann? Yeah, well, it was a PB for her, and, and these are the junior finals, so it's really good that they get that chance to have a second swim because at most you know, British tracks like this, they don't get a chance to do that extra second swim, so it's really good to see them and see what they can do at night time. Uh -huh. and, and, and moving on to the junior men's 200 breaststroke as well, swimming in a pool straight after yeah. Michael Jameson has just swum. How inspiring must that be? Well, it's such a competitive race there's so many people in there and, and like um, you know Bob and Ross were just saying it is going to have to be you know a really special swim for them to break out onto the senior swims but you know it's certainly a start of 217 is a great split it's a PB for him as well I'm running I'm losing track of all the PBs that have happened <laughs> I know tonight. we're just like literally tallying them off here aren't we as well a few British records in there yeah. as well just to add, add to the mix so what's been your highlight so far from the finals that we've seen this evening for me it has to be James Guy's uh, 400 freestyle breaking that British record it was just so good I couldn't think of anybody better that I'd want to get a brush record and you had the goosebumps as yeah, well didn't you goosebumps. we said earlier you're running up and down the poolside shouting like a coach and then you had the goosebumps and sat down and and tried to compose yourself yeah. a little bit but it was a great swim wasn't yeah. it I mean it really was good and, and he does still have little areas that he can work on his turns and has to make sure he doesn't double breathe in or out of any of those turns so it's really exciting for him and his coach that yes he did such a great time but he still has improvements to go as well yeah and always things to work on moving towards the summer yeah. um, of course which is like you say it's, it's great to have those points he can yeah. go back go back to the drawing board with his coach and then move forwards and get even better times yeah which is what we want isn't it exactly um moving on for the women then highlights for tonight highlights Siobhan Marie O'Connor in that 200 freestyle I mean she's third in the world ranked and that is just an outstanding place it's really really world class so you know she's second in the commonwealth uh who knows what could happen at the Commonwealth? You know, when you're in there, and she seems like a real fighter as well. So yeah, she does. She's, she's got, got a lot like of grit, hasn't she, and determination. Yeah, exactly. She's got a lot of events, so she will be well and truly warmed up. And Francesca Halsall swim. You were happy with that as well? Yeah, it was a really good, a really good split for her. I think it's going to be really interesting tomorrow. Again, Siobhan Maria Connor will be in that same that same swim. So, like the boys were saying, Fran does not like losing. Well, I think you're probably going to hear very shortly who's going to stand uh, on the podium. So we'll move over and have a look at the medal presentation. So as we, you know, we, we mentioned, the crowds do go absolutely crazy, and rightly so, as we said, he's in a, his home turf. But what a great swim from him after swimming last weekend in the yeah. Scottish Championships to pull that time out the bag. Yeah, 2.07 is, is a really good time to do, and a lot of the people will be checking tonight to see how quick he did in the pool. And I think, you know, he should be really happy with that time. Like you keep saying, he's still got more to give, so hopefully we can see a world record back here in the summer. And that quiet determination in his, his post-race interview as well, you know where he said he's, he's sick of getting silvers which is what we, what we want to yeah. hear isn't it yeah. because that quiet determination can lead to great things and seeing swims like that in the pool as well is great isn't it yeah well he's just he's a real competitor as well so no matter what time he does I'm sure he'll always strive to do better even if he broke the world record tonight he'd be happy for a minute and then he'd be like right how can I better yeah. how, can how can I make I me better on? now uh, we've had a few tweets in again yes. haven't we carry on have yes. you got any more that you want to answer I do yes yeah. so um, there's a really good question from your tour limited and it was uh, how does the 50 breaststroke differ from the 200 breaststroke? Well, it's quite an interesting one because the, the 50 breaststroke is a real sprint event. Yeah. So you're using pretty much everything that you've got just to do 50 meters. Whereas for the 200, it's it's almost the distance event of the breaststrokes. If you go out too hard like you would do on a 50, you will blow up and it will be a horrible, a horrible <laughs> finish at the end. <laughs> I've look, seen it happen. You, this oh, has happened to you, carry on. I feel like you relive in the moment right now. <laughs> it has happened and it's it's not nice to see and it's yeah. not nice to be part of or, or to feel it really does make a big difference so generally you'll see someone like Michael Jameson who is great at 200 breaststroke he's not 
as great on the 50 and on the 100. So um, it's kind of a bit of a niche, really, all the three different brushstroke events. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd love to know his split for that last 50, because yeah. that's where, as you say, you can either die in that last 50 yeah. where it, it's painful, you've hit the wall and that's it, and you just see the swimmers kind of slowly move back. But he's, he really powers through that, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's trained a lot for the back end to make sure that his last 100, his last 50 is, is he's passing people, trying to do that swim, that split as quick as he can. Uh -huh. Now, any other performances uh, tonight that we can touch on that you were you were also happy with? I think they were you were really good. So we had um, Amy Wilmot in the 400 medley right up at the top of the session. A little bit of a disappointing time. I'm sure she'll want to go much quicker than that. But you know she. She had to do it all on her own, and she did have an injury, I think, a little while ago. So whether that's impacted on her, her body, whether that's impacted on her mentally as well. So there's a few things there that, you know, I think we can improve on in the summer. Um, so sometimes it's good to have a, a bit of a disappointment at the trials because yeah. it keeps you hungry. It wants, you, yeah. know, you want to make sure that you improve. You want to better the time that you did. It's certainly um, a good rehearsal, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. For, for the event. We've also had um, another question from Hannah de Gleish, which was, why are the qualifying times... Um, only consideration times. And good question. That is yeah. a good question. And she backs that up with, is there a limited number of places? So yes, there is a limited number of places. There's only 36 that can make it onto the England team. So everything is a consideration time at the moment. And the team will actually only be announced on Wednesday, I'd, I'd suggest. So when the England selectors have had chance to sit down and watch all of the races through and decide which athletes are the highest ranked on the FINA point system. So that will all come down to Wednesday. So yeah. as we said earlier in, in our video, if somebody swims a gold medal, a, a gold yeah. uh, medal position today, great swim, PB, they won't find out until Wednesday either. So it's not a no. given uh, when somebody qualifies and it, it's not like, right, you have qualified, which is yeah. why we're not saying uh, throughout this week, are we? Yeah, so we can't really say if anybody has qualified or if they haven't qualified yet for, for the Commonwealth Games, um, you know, in the summer in this pool. So we can just, you know, see great swims like James Guy's um, British record attempt. I think that mm -hmm. should, in my eyes, I think that will rank quite high up. A couple of the Australians had a really good, really good time at their trials not that long ago. So we'll just have to wait and see um, who has the highest ranked point system. Yeah, and we'll, like we say, we'll find that out on Wednesday. So it's it's all to win for yes. this week. It literally all to win for and all <laughs> to, to swim and get those times for. So tomorrow, uh, very quickly, we're moving. We'll be starting here on the live stream at quarter to nine in the morning, 10 to nine. Our faces will be bright <laughs> and chirpy. We'll bright be ready for another day of action. Um, so 8.55, we will kick off with all of the action for you. Um, and any information that we can get between now and tomorrow, we'll make sure that we'll fill you in on that. So tomorrow, very quickly, quick yep. five questions, carry on. Men's 200 meter freestyle. James will be wanting to back that up with a really great swim as well. Indeed, he will. 50 meter freestyle for the women. So we'll see Fran again. This is her race. This is the one that she will want to win. The blue ribbon, the, sorry, the blue ribbon event. Of this is her forte, yes. isn't it? Um, and then the 100 meter breaststroke for men. So we'll have Michael Jameson again, but we have um, Adam Peaty, he'll really want to, to do this, and, and he is the 100 breaststroke specialist. Uh -huh. And any fatigue there for, for Michael, we'll, we'll see that tomorrow. Right. And the 100 metre backstroke for the women is an interesting one. Yeah, so we've got Lauren Quigley from Stockport Metro. We have Elizabeth Simmons. You know, she'll, she didn't make a team last year, so she's really wanting to fight back. She wants to make sure that she is on this Commonwealth team. OK, and then we'll move on to the men's 400 metre individual medley. Yeah, so we'll have um, quite a few people for that. So we'll have Lewis Smith on the Scottish team um, and we'll have Roberto Pavoni as well for that event. OK, and then finally the S8 classification, the 100 metre freestyle for the women as well tomorrow. Yeah, I think all those races are going to be really exciting and I think um, I just can't wait to see more PBs and I can't wait to see hopefully more British records being broken this week. I, I certainly can't <laughs> either. So that's been the action for the first day here at the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Well, what will tomorrow bring? If anything, carry on at five to nine tomorrow morning. I will be here ready. Me not, too. not quite in my swimming costume <laughs> and not that keen, um, but I'm very excited for tomorrow's <laughs> events after seeing the, the incredible action of today. Yeah, well, it's inspired me to get in. I might go for a swim now, actually. Yeah, oh, right now? Yeah, I think okay. so. Well, I certainly won't be going in the pool. If you're going in, I'm not going in. But thank you very much for joining us today and see you tomorrow morning at five to nine.